On today's episode of Angel's Garage, I finally get to see what the rest of the car will hopefully look like in the future. In my previous video, I pulled some bolts I shouldn't have when I was attempting to remove the passenger side fender. While I successfully removed the fender, I also successfully broke my door to where it wouldn't open anymore. My first goal of the day was to fix my door, which was completed with my friend, Mr. Crowbar. Oh. Alright, so I got the door open now. So now I'm going to go ahead and put those bolts I took off back in there. That way uh, I have a functional door again. Hey! Looky there, it works! Wow, I actually managed to fix something. Alright, I want to go ahead and begin removing all these rubber seals here. So I got these two back here for the uh, bumper. And I got two more uh, located right at the top of the uh, doors. So let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and pull off my little rubber uh, flap thing here. Uh, There's only one bolt holding that left, so that should be really easy to pull. Then I'm going to try pulling these bolts here and remove my uh, hood latch, which should be interesting because this whole hood latch is quite a little system they got here, but we will get it out one way or another. That was easy. I might as well take this while we're at it. So you know what I love so far about this car? Everything on this car is a half inch. All the bolts, like, I just pulled off like a half this front end here, and it's all half inch stuff. It's amazing. So before this uh, latch system here comes out, I'm going to have to pull the horns first and uh, probably I'm going to pull my bumper brackets here to make things easier. Yep, that was it. Ah. Perfect. think that's just about the entire wire harness for the engine bay. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to remove is this trim piece right here. So I can begin working on fixing uh, this door handle here too. So I got first pull out this track here. Then I'll get have enough room to get access to the nuts holding this uh, trim piece in. Then I'm going to begin hacking away. 
my favorite part. That worked. Now it's time to apply paint stripper. I go ahead, dump some jazz co on top of the door, and brush it all over the place. After the paint stripper does its thing, I come back with an angle grinder and begin knocking off all the old paint and bondo. Alright. Well, I think we all know what's up next. Cutting time. Well, unfortunately, it looks like I got a little too happy with my uh, cutting this time, and I cut into the door skin a bit here and a tiny bit here. Although I think this is just kind of a scratch. This one, that's one to be fixed with the weld. But, ain't nothing we can do but move on. go. There you go. Don't worry. No one's ever going to hurt you again. All right, so I'm going to begin working on moving everything from the uh, dash area in here. As you can see, we got a lot of uh, wiring, controls, uh, ventilation ducting that's uh, uh oh uh uh that'll, that'll buff out anyway i'm gonna go ahead and get started removing all of that and want to try to get everything in here as clear as possible uh because i like to paint well everything all right well this looks like a good enough place to start so looks like the only thing left holding this guy in is some wiring and two control cables so that shouldn't be too hard right i'm hoping these cables just pop out once i remove this uh little cover here but i wouldn't be surprised if i had to pull out the cable from the other end too but let's see come on come on. there we go all right one cable off, one to go. Yes. Oh, come on. Oh, that works, I guess. There we go. One heater control unit. You know what? This one actually isn't isn't in too bad shape. Even the switches still kind of, you know, work. Yeah, this one ain't bad at all. Go ahead, separate this uh, here. Come on, there you go. Oh, so there's the heater core, and then this controls how much heat you have. Actually, actually it still works. Imagine that. So while I was poking around on the inside, it looks like I have to remove some bolts on from the engine bay before I could pull out some of that heat ducting. So I'm going to work on pulling some of these bolts out here, then we'll see if we can get that heat ducting out.
I bet you this thing probably still works, despite how rough it looks. All right, so I've got four studs here. One here, one there, one there, and one down here. And I imagine if I remove all those nuts on there, I think it should free up my heating duct from coming out. So let's see if that works. Now this nut here was refusing to come out. The whole stud was just spinning. I had just a solution to a problem like this though. Fire. got the wire harness out. That totally wasn't paying the butt. And here's the wire harness. This thing is just a giant nasty pile of spaghetti basically. Unfortunately I'll probably have to reuse this wire harness though because I can't find any place that reproduces these so I'm gonna have to give this a good cleanup and um, make sure there's no breaks or tears in it. Then I'll put it back in the car eventually. Now that a majority of the parts are off the car, I can begin my next phase of this project, paint and bodywork. I decided to start on two pieces that I thought would be easy. Keyword, thought. These two pieces include the front cowl and the rear window cover. I first began by applying paint stripper to the rear window cover. A tip I found here on YouTube was to apply a sheet of plastic over the paint stripper after application. This helps keep the paint stripper from drying out, allowing it to work longer. After the paint stripper does its thing, I scrape off all the loose paint and then apply a second coat of paint stripper. When the second coat was done doing its thing, I began scraping off the paint again and found every car restorer's worst nightmare. Bondo. Don't you just love it when you strip paint off a surface and just find an absolute ton of Bondo? I think I'm going to need to bust out the sandblaster for the rest of this so I can get all that bondo off. Time to repeat this process on the cowl. Although this time I skip the scraping and just go straight to the angle grinder. So this is the underside of my rear cowl piece that goes below where the rear window is. And yeah, this thing is pretty rusty. Like, this is actually a lot worse than I thought, this being a California car and all. But uh, I will take care of this real quick with my friend, Mr. Sandblaster. With that, I begin sandblasting. Sandblasting is by far the most effective way of removing rust, paint, and even Bondo. Its main drawback is that it's super messy. But in cases like this, there's really no other way to effectively clean the surface. So as we can see uh, here, a little bit over here, and quite a bit right up on top here, this thing had some rust issues in the past. Now, the previous owner tried to fix this at one point with some uh, welded on panels here, which were um, uh, done, I guess. They weren't done the best. So it looks like he just kind of laid a panel on top of the uh, sheet metal here. And then when he was done welding, just kind of hammered everything down to get it to sit a little flush. But that's not even the worst part of it. So the guy did these fixes here. Then he comes back here and wells this bracket closed, which is good and all, but if you remember, there was a bunch of rust all up here. So this guy came back here, fixed this panel here, took off all the paint and rust, and then didn't bother to prime it or paint it or do nothing, slapped it back on the car and slathered this thing with Bondo and called it good. And then, uh, yeah, then everything back here rusted because he didn't do any priming back here. 
So now I get to deal with all of his, uh, you know, fun, all these little nice fixes here. And I also have to deal with filling up all these holes because he didn't bother to fix the rust to begin with. Yes. So now I get to have fun welding all of these holes closed. So I just got done grinding all of my welds here, and while I was able to plug up most of the holes, there's still a few holes here and there, and it's just getting a little too hard to weld these holes closed now, because basically the sheet metal where it rusted through is like this, basically the thickness of tissue paper. So when, as soon as you start welding on it, the hole just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So to plug up these last few remaining holes, I'm just going to go ahead and use some JB Weld and do my best to plug the holes closed, because they're small enough that I'm not too worried that they will eventually you know, fall out or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug up these holes with JB Weld, then I could go ahead and get started working with Bondo. I go ahead and apply some JB Weld into all the pinholes, and after a 24 hour cure, I begin sanding the surface flat. After straightening out a slight twist I found in the piece, I begin applying new body filler to the surface. After a quick 15 minute cure, I begin sanding again. I then repeat this process again and again. Body work is one of the most dreaded parts of restoration, and I can see why. This work requires extreme precision and attention to detail for the final product to come out looking good, something that can be quite time consuming and tedious. Once I'm satisfied of all the body work, I go ahead and test fit the piece back onto the car to make sure it came out good. And yeah, it came out pretty good. So now I can move on to primer. Alrighty, so this is the stuff here I'll be using to coat the inside of this uh, piece here. And as you can see, if you look inside, I'm not sure how well it's going to pick up, but there is still rust inside these channels here. Unfortunately, um, the only way you could really get at that is if you had this whole thing chemically dipped to remove all the rust, but I don't have access to that. So the next best thing is uh, this stuff here. So this stuff claims it converts, encapsulates, and seals rust on internal frame surfaces. And it has a few additives and acids in there to help uh, eliminate, prevent future corrosion and to keep the current corrosion from spreading anymore. So we'll see how this works. Um, but this piece is, a, I think, a pretty good test piece because this thing has a lot of interior surface rust and even has these little pockets here which uh, Looks like it got little holes in them already, especially this one, so these areas definitely need it too. I want to go ahead and try it on this section first, because these ha this has a lot of holes in here, so I could, pro I could get a good idea of what's happening in there, just in this section alone. But yeah, we will see. Uh, hopefully, this does a good job. We will find out. So people did warn, if you get this stuff on anything, it's probably going to stay there a long time. So I'm in coveralls, got my gloves on. So hopefully, I don't spray myself, but uh, I'm not too confident that's going to happen. While I let the internal frame paint dry, I began sanding down the cowl to bare steel. With all the sanding finished and the internal frame paint applied, I can begin working on applying epoxy primer. For this I'm using Tamco epoxy primer. This stuff builds up thick, guaranteeing these parts will hopefully never rust again. After epoxy primer, I go ahead and apply a high build primer to the visible surfaces. The high build primer allows you to sand the surface perfectly smooth, and if you have any small defects, this primer can help hide it. The next day I begin sanding the surfaces down as smoothly as I can. I also apply the last coat of body filler to the rear window cover. After a few hours, I have both of the surfaces perfectly smooth, leaving only one final step. Paint. Before paint, I have to get my paint booth ready, which is quite a task because my paint booth is, well, it's just my garage. 
first I have to move the fleet of tractors outside. First is my dad's 1945 Ford 2N. Following that is my 1947 John Deere Model A. I go ahead and close the paint curtain, hang up my ventilation fan into the window, throw a tarp on the floor, and then begin hanging up my parts. For paint, I'm using a base coat clear coat system from Tamco. I'm painting this car back to its original color, Chalfonte Blue, which is just a fancy way of saying light turquoise. On top of this, I'm using Tamco's Aeroclear, a high solids clear coat that is much thicker than typical clear coat which should make this paint job tougher and last much longer. I go ahead and wipe the parts off with acetone and then give a final wipe with a tack cloth. Now I can begin mixing paint. I can't lie, I'm a little nervous right now. <laughs> because I just spent a whole bunch of time prepping these parts for paint. So now, I'm just nervous that I won't get this paint job 100% perfect. I'll do my best, of course, but I'll be happy once I <laughs> once the paint job's done. I'll leave it at that. Ah, perfect. Looky there. I always like to drill holes in the rim of the can. This is actually something my dad showed me. The purpose for this is when you go to pour paint out of your can, these will act as drain holes. And also, what happens, sometimes when you go to put the lid back on, it's like um, when you try to hammer it down, it just kind of keeps pushing up in areas because they'll be so full. But these holes will allow you to hammer the lid down, to you know, completely down all the way. And when you spend, you know, couple hundred bucks for paint, it's a good to protect your investment. Alright. After a second coat of base coat and a 20 minute wait, I can begin mixing my clear coat. And here's the final result. Overall, not bad at all. The rear window piece came out just about perfect, and the cowl piece came out pretty decently. The cowl piece has some more orange peel on it that I would typically like. However, since this is a light color, it isn't too noticeable, so I'll probably go ahead and leave it how it is. Well, that's it for this video. In my next video, I will begin painting even more parts and begin prepping the car for primer. If you liked this video and would like to follow me on this restoration journey, maybe consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. Well, I'll see you all next time. Bye.